Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly by Alan Madison and Kevin Hawks. Velma Gratch was the youngest of the three Gratch sisters. Frida, the oldest, had gone through first grade first, followed by Fiona. Now it was Velma's turn. The chorus teacher remembered Frida best because she had a voice like an angel. The gym teacher remembered Fiona best because she ran like the devil. And the first grade teacher, Mr. Plexipus, finally remembered both sisters because of Frida's miraculous math and Fiona's spectacular spelling. Everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal had magnificent memories of the older craft girls, but they could hardly even recall Velma's name. This made Velma feel as if she did not belong in the first grade at all. She wanted to curl into a ball and roll right back into kindergarten. Of course you belong, cooed Velma's mother, trying to cheer her up. You've only just begun. Soon everybody will notice you. Velma couldn't wait. She needed to be noticed now. In chorus, she sang loudest so that the teacher could hear her best. In gym, she ran slowest so that the teacher could see her best. And in class, she refused to read and muddled her math. Mr. Plexippus lamented that she was the first scratch sister ever sent to the principal's office. This brought a small smile to Velma's lips. Little Scratch, why are you singing so loudly in chorus and running so slowly in gym? inquired Principal Crossley. Because, answered Velma, I want you to remember me just like you remember Frida and Fiona. The principal's owlish eyes opened wide. But my dear, those scratches are remembered for good things. Velma's small smile pretzel twisted into a full-blown frown. Science was Velma's favorite subject. She had learned many fabulous facts, like how a rainbow is born and why a volcano burps. The latest lesson was about butterflies. Mr. Plexippus explained that a butterfly starts as an egg. The egg turns into a caterpillar. The caterpillar disappears into a chrysalis, which is a little sap and does not come out until it has changed into a beautiful butterfly. He called this changing metamorphosis. Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, so she repeated it again and again as she walked home. Metamorphosis, metamorphosis, metamorphosis. Frida, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her older sister. No, we learned worms, Frida replied. Fiona, when you were in first grade, did you study butterflies? Velma asked her middle sister. No, we found out about frogs, Fiona stated. Well, said Velma proudly, we are studying butterflies and, and, meddle more for this. That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in way cool agreement. Velma read everything in the library about butterflies. She discovered that there are 20,000 different kinds, which was a lot. She adored the ones with colorful names, brown elfin, frosted flasher, sleepy orange, and the ones with funny names, comma, question mark, American snout. Not to mention the ones with strange names, morpho, painted lady, gossamer wing. But her favorite butterfly of all was the orange and black monarch. When it got cold, all the monarchs would fly south to Mexico to stay warm. Velma thought this was an amazing coincidence because last winter vacation, she and her family had also flown south to Mexico to stay warm. In science, Mr. Plexippus announced that they would take a class trip to the Butterfly Conservatory, a place where real butterflies were collected and cared for. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked home. Conservatory, conservatory, conservatory. Frida, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked her older sister. Absolutely. We went to the museum, Frida replied. Fiona, did you take a class trip in first grade? Velma asked her middle sister. Absolutely. We went to the aquarium, Fiona stated. Well, said Velma proudly, we're going to the can, can, 
can serve the story. That's way cool, Frida declared, and Fiona bobbled her head in way cool agreement. The Butterfly Conservatory was surrounded by fancy flower beds and bedecked with banners of butterflies. Velma was so excited, her knobby knees wobbled, her spaghetti arms trembled, and her carroty curls shook. A sharp-nosed woman holding a clipboard introduced herself. I am your tour guide. Inside a butterfly might land on you, but please don't touch its wings. Does anyone know why? Velma's hand shot up. Because they're made of teeny tiny scales, and that could rub off like dust, and that is not good, she explained. Precisely, said the guide. What's your name? I'm Velma, the youngest of the three Grouch sisters. Hmm, I don't think I know your sisters, the guide commented as they entered the rainforest room. It was a magical space slathered in tall green tr and tall trees and tangled vines. Water gurgled over rocks and butterflies of every variety, giant swallowtails, short-tailed skippers, pygmy blues, and best of all, monarchs. Flew up to forever. The guide explained that when it got colder in a couple of weeks, she would take the monarchs into the park and let them go free so that they could fly to Mexico. This traveling was called migration. Because Velma didn't want to forget this extra long word, she repeated it again and again as she walked through the rainforest. Migration, migration, migration. A gorgeous green comma rested on Randy's head. The class ooed. A baby brown elfin settled on Sandy's nose. The class odd. A big blue morpho alighted on Andy's shoulder. The class gasped, but not one single butterfly landed on any part of Velma. Time to leave, instructed Mr. Plexipus as they neared the exit. A tear formed in a distant corner of Velma's eye. All she wanted was one single tingly touch of a butterfly. On a nearby branch sat a most lovely monarch. How she yearned to pet those velvety wings. She moved slowly. The class was leaving. One more inch. It was so pretty. She froze. If she touched its wings, it might. Velma couldn't do it. She couldn't hurt a butterfly. Come now, Velma. We have to go. Sadly, Velma turned away, and at that very moment, the most marvelous thing happened. The monarch hopped from its branch and roosted right on Velma's finger. Delicate wings slowly folded, antenna twitching, weightless and wondrous, the insect sat. Velma was in heaven. The bus is waiting, her teacher called. Velma placed her finger next to the branch. Bye bye, butterfly, she whispered, but the monarch didn't move. For closing, said the guide, Velma lightly blew on the butterfly. It didn't budge. Without ever touching the butterfly's wings, everyone tried to get the monarch to fly, crawl, or walk off of Velma's finger. But nothing worked. At last, Velma was told to leave with the butterfly still perched on her pointer. I stayed there on the bus ride home. It stayed there when she slept and was still there when she awoke. It stayed during gym, math, reading, ballet, soccer. Day in and day out, it, it stayed put on that pointer. Soon, everyone from the class guinea pig to the principal knew about Velma and her butterfly. Mr. Plexipus lamented that Velma was positively the first scratch ever sent to the principal's office twice. This stuck an oversized frown on Velma's face. Velma, Principal Crossley com com commanded, it is time for the butterfly to go. Oh, I've tried to get it to go, Velma moaned, but it just won't. Well, no one will ever forget this, the principal fumed. Velma's frown pretzel twisted into a small smile. Hey, I know what to do, she proclaimed. My gray son. Velma paraded Principal Crossley, Mr. Plexipus, her class, Frida, and Fiona to the park. Car horns honked, people yelled, but despite all the commotion, the monarch did not move. A cool wind from the west blew through the field. In the middle stood the tour guide from the conservatory, carefully opening an enormous sack. 
A single monarch butterfly stepped out, looked around, and flitted away. It was trailed by ten, then ten more, soaring up and up until the sky overflowed with big clouds of orange and black. What's happening? wondered Frida. Why are you letting them go? demanded Fiona. Migration, answered the guide. My gray son, repeated Velma. The wind tousled Velma's hair and tickled her butterfly's wings. The monarch jumped onto her nose as if to give her a kiss and then took flight to join its friends. Over the tree tops it flew, over the sky creek scrapers, and up into the wild blue, orange, and black yonder on its way to Mexico. Velma, shouted Principal Crossley, and every eye turned toward her. Oh no, fretted Velma, sure that she was about to become the only grouch grouch ever sent to the principal's office three times. That was way cool, the principal said, and one and all bobbled their heads in way cool agreement. Then, with her fine finger where the monarch's head sat still a tingle, Velma, followed her to by her two sisters floated home. Thanks for listening.